Hey y'all, I'm back with um, Office Chapter 10 here. Continuing. Okay. She could feel them watching her make her way down the aisle, waiting to see what she would do. No one spoke or moved. All the beds were full. Jenny was sitting on a mattress next to Colette, her head down, picking at her nails. No one wanted to be the new girl first friend. And she wouldn't expect Jenny to give up her spot. Anyway, on the last bed next to the window, Gigi sat smiling with her rag doll punched to her chest. Thea turned around to face Sister Ernestine. May I sleep on the floor, Sister Ernestine? One of the girls sniggered. What's the matter, she said. You don't want to sleep with a wet... You don't want to sleep with a wet the bed? The other girls laughed. Hush. Ernestine hissed. Everyone fell silent. You will share bed with Gigi, Miss Lange, and you will be grateful for it. Gigi slid over to make room and Pia climbed in next to her. Thankful at least that she already touched Gigi and hadn't felt anything amiss. Maybe once the rest of the girls went to sleep, she could get out of bed and lay on the floor between the bed and the window where no one would see for her. Hands on top of your blankets. Ernestine said, and no talking. The girls got under the covers, making sure to rest their arms outside their blankets. Sister Ernestine moved along the beds, checking to make sure everyone's hands were where, were where she could see them. Her wide chin jiggling with every step. Once she was satisfied that everyone has obeyed, she went back to the door in town and said, Who wants to tell Pia what will happen if she so much as whispered after I leave. A girl of about six raised her hand. Sister Ernestine pointed at her. The girl gapped at Pia with frightened eyes. The devil will come for you, she said. Say it louder so everyone can hear, Sister Ernestine said. The devil will come for you, the girl shouted. A few of the other girls looked at one another and rolled their eyes. Sister Ernestine didn't seem to notice. That's right, she said, and because all of you come from fallen homes, you're easy prey for Satan. Remember that. Now say your prayers and go to sleep. Yes, yeah, Sister Ernestine, the girl said in unison. Without another word, Sister Ernestine left and the room went dark. The door shut and a key turned in the deadbolt. The only sounds were her footsteps clumping down the hall and the nightstand whistling through the cracks around the windows. After a long minute, the girls started whispering and giggling. Someone started humming. Someone else cried softly into her pillows. Gigi curled up beside Pia and put her arm around her, mumbling something Pia didn't understand. Walking towards six Pia, a voice said in the dark, it sounded like it came from the next bed. What kind of name is Pia, someone else said in a mocking tone. A girl snickered and another girl joined in. I was named after my great-grandmother, Pia said. She started to say her name was, was German, then stopped. Who knew what the other girls had been taught before they came to the orphanage? Well, don't thank your mother for that, the mother voice said. Some of the girls giggled. Don't listen to them, a third voice said. It sounded like Jenny. Pia sat up on the elbows and looked around the room. Trying to see her, it was too dark. Can we call you Pia Potter? Someone said. How about Wee Wee? Maybe her mother thought she was a real pisser. More laughter. Stop it, Jenny said. Her mother died from the purple death. Several gaps sounded around the room and the laughter society. Did you see her die? The voice, the first voice said. Yeah, tell us what happened, the marker voice said. Did her eyes bleed all over her face? Don't say that, Jenny said. You'll scare the littles. Oh, come on, the market boy said. We all saw what happened to Sister Anne. That doesn't mean we have to talk about it, Jenny said. I had nightmares for a solid week after she collapsed in the recreation room. So did Gigi. So did Gigi. We all did, someone said. I didn't see it. my mother die, he said. When I woke up in the morning, she was already gone. I'm sorry, Yates, the market boy said. Me too, someone else said. My mother's coming back to get me some, the small voice said. 
No, she's not, the Martin voice said. I told you a hundred times, sister at Ernestine is lying. She told you that so you will stop crying. She tell us all the kids that. She does not, the small voice said. My mother is coming back. She told me she was. Shh, Jenny said, be quiet. Do you want to get punched punish again? Everyone stopped talking in the room from quiet. Iron bed legs cracked and bodies moved on the mattresses. Then Jenny whispered, Pia, yeah. If Sister Ernestine catches you, catches anyone talking or crying out the lights out, they get three lashes with a leather scrap. And I don't and don't get scared if she comes into the room in the middle of the night to force us out to the outhouse. He does that sometimes, mostly when she's in a bad mood. Yeah, the marker voice said, and she makes us sit too to a hole and stay there until we go, even in the winter. Whoever it was, she sounded at. She sounded sad and solemn now. Thanks for telling me, Pia said. Welcome, Jenny said. Then the room went quiet again. Pia turned towards the window and laid on her side, tears filling her eyes. Somehow she had to get out of there. And I'll be back with the continuation of Orphanage Pia Chapter 10.